What's up guys, this is Juan Ramirez with Angler's Covey and I'm here to bring you the July Bug of the Month, which is the Trico. So the Tricos on the South Platte are one of our favorite hatches to fish during the summer. The South Platte produces incredible hatches and spinner falls of the Trico and we spend June, July, August through September and even sometimes into October fishing these hatches and the, actually the spinner fall and it produces incredible incredible fishing some days. And I'm here to show you a couple of my favorite patterns that I like to fish, the 180 trico spinner and the flat wing spinner. What I got here is a trico spinner for the uh, trico spinner fall whenever it happens. Um, I'm gonna tie the 180 spinner and it's a just a basic generic version. It's kind of a simplified synthetic uh, Comparadon and using some uh, materials that are pretty easy to obtain. Um, we're going to start with a hook, straight eye hook, something like this. Any of your TMC 100 hooks are going to be um, a great match for that. And then some yarn in white. And the variety of yarn you can use is Widow's Web by Montana Fly Company, that works great, as well as my favorite probably is the EP fibers, just the, the white or an off color such as Polar Bear or something like that. McFly Lawn is another one and the Poly Yarn in white. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna use a black thread, smaller is better. And we're just gonna get that on top and, and get it secured on the hook shank either cut or break your thread off other materials we're using for the tailing is going to be the micro fibbits and we're just going to use two you could use three if you want to uh, what i want to do is just untwist my thread and as i'm talking it's doing that i'm going to grab two of these fibers and that's all i need i'm going to cut those off once I lay those on the hook shank there, gather them together right on top, couple hook, couple wraps, and then we're gonna measure on the length there, okay? So we're gonna pull those back just a little bit. Longer is okay. If you look at the natural trichos in, on the water, they have long tails. So what I wanna do is come underneath, make that wrap, to prop them up just a little bit. I'll separate with my fingers there, a couple wraps, and come in. So basically what I'm doing is just a figure eight. So I'm gonna make one wrap over, and what I did is I kicked this tail, the closest one to me. Now I'm gonna come behind and kick the far one out. So what I wanna do is just have those splayed out just like so. If you tie three, you'll have one right in the middle that helps to stabilize the fly while on the water. Generally, the sizes I use in this, the smaller the better. But once you go small, they're hard to see. So this one in right here in the vise is gonna be about a size 18. And I'm tying that for the video purpose, but I would certainly go smaller to 20s and 22s, even 24s. And if you want to go smaller, jump over to the 2488 hook. That's going to give you a short shank with a wide gap. So the next item is that uh, the EP fibers in white. We're going to gather up a bunch and cut them off of the hank. Just um, it, it's hard to gauge, but once you tie these, you'll get a you'll you'll get enough to tie them in, make a full wing. So again, we're gonna come in here and cut so we're, we're smooth, clean those off. We're just gonna lay this on there, gather it with a couple wraps. When you pull it up, you wanna measure, you don't wanna be too close to the eye, but not too far back. So I'm gonna make a few more wraps, bring that up. I like it, so I'm gonna wrap that down and lock it down in there. Come in with your scissors and come down and cut with the tips and get that cut short. So that's what we have right now. We're gonna wrap that all down, clean up that body, 
in front and behind. So it almost looks like a parachute post. We're gonna leave it like that for now. The uh, next item is, is dubbing. In this case, the Spirit River, the black dubbing, the other dubbing you can use is the super fine dubbing in black. So we just need a little bit of that. We're gonna gather just a little bit and dub it on our thread. So we're gonna dub up here. And it can be kind of heavy, kind of thick because those trichos, uh, when they're on the water, they do have those really bulky and thick thoraxes. So we're gonna put a couple wraps up front, a couple wraps behind, around, kind of figure eight, lock it in there. Once we're here, we can pull our wing down just a little bit to help it to uh, splay out somewhat. Once we're there, we can use your whip finish. And we're just gonna come in here like so. Double whip finish. So two whip finishes on there. Cut. And then bring this down. We're gonna bring those wings down and splay them so that they're at 180 on that. Bring gather them once more bring them back cut that wing there and then we can continue to maneuver those in place so what you should have is a pattern that has a full 180 degree wing with a split tail a bulky thorax at the front end just to represent the thickness of the the naturals on the water now the thing i like about this fly is that you can see it on the water a little bit better than say a flat spinner um, it shows up a little bit more especially when you put a frog's fanny or something uh, floatant on it and you can you can pick it out in the bright sunlight which is usually when the trico spinners are out so that's the 180 degree trico spinner cool so next we have a generic flat wing spinner trico spinner um, this one is one of my go-to's as the hatch or spinner fall progresses because the early rises, the, the feeding that the, the fish begin to do early on in the spinner fall, they will eat everything that they see and as it progresses those fish get can get a little picky and they are looking for specific sizes at a certain point before the hatch ends and um, after they've kind of consumed the the first let's call it the first phase of, of spinners that hit the water where they just go nuts they get a little picky sometimes so this one's a flat spinner i'm going to start out with a straight eye hook such as a tmc 100 or in this case a, a daiichi 1640. it's got a wide gap straight eye we're gonna go back to our materials we discussed earlier. We're gonna tie in our tails. Same thing, two tails, split. And these, you can use white on these. This one happens to be medium done. Those work as well. So again, longer tails are okay. You don't have to be precise on those. Back opposite the barb. Kick those up with the thread wrap. We're gonna try to split those. So we can pre-split those and then wrap our thread, figure eight, our thread through those. So I just kind of separated them, come in with my thread kind of loose, gather the my near side, kick it to me, put a wrap over the hook shank, come up and over and kick this one out. And that's kind of your figure eight. So we can untwist our thread if we choose to. We can wrap down our, our tails right on top. We're gonna come in here clip that short and again we're gonna get our material we used earlier this is gonna be our wing as well it's just gonna be a flat wing though in this this case so what I'll do is I'll kind of twist it up gather it a little bit there's a couple tricks we're gonna tie it in this way so come underneath your thread to gather it you can put a wrap or two and then kick it to the side just like so so now it should be 
90 degrees to the hook shank. Once we do that, we can come and figure eight that around to gather everything. One other trick you can do is cut this shorter so you're not having to deal with one long piece. So we're going to figure eight right through that. And then the only other step we're going to do is add some dubbing. And I like to twist these as I go just to kind of gather them and keep them somewhat together. So that's what you should have right there. You can go in and add your dubbing next. Again, being a little bit thicker than what you would do for some other mayfly like a blue wing olive. And this is black dubbing. So make sure it's on there nice and tight. And then again, we're just gonna figure eight through that. Front, back, around, just to build up that thorax nice and thick. Once we're done, we're just gonna whip finish that and tie it off. The other option you can do in this point before we tie it off is you can put a small piece of foam here if you want to tie it in just to get a little bit more visibility. You can put in another piece of yarn in here so it kicks up if you choose to do that to try to get a little bit more visibility as well. We're going to keep this as our flat spinner. A couple wraps on that to tie it off. Whip finish. Cut. And now for the length of our wing, I got one of these I got to cut off. We're going to gather our wings up. What I like to do is bring them up and then lay my blade without cutting our tails and pull them back so they're even and then cut there. So that's our completed, I'm calling it just a generic spinner. It's flat on the sides. This is a large size. I like to time in at least 20s, the biggest 22s, 24s, even 26s. They're really hard to see, so if you can if you can time behind a caddis or anything else, that's a good idea. So one last thing I'm going to do is just round off these wings just a little bit so they're not blunt. And that's it. That's what we got right there. It's just a trico spinner. Thank you for watching and joining us while we're tying the bug of the month for July, which is the trico. Join us next week while we're out on the water showing you a few tricks and techniques on how to fish the trico spinner fall and enjoy it on the South Platte. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the fly shop. Come in, talk to us. We're more than happy to help you.